Hello students welcome to the online revision class today we are going to cover unit 3 students before we start the class i want all of you to be ready with your student reader notebook and a pencil or a pen i will count down 3 to 1 3 2 one i hope all of you are ready with the required material so let us start our class layers of earth our earth is round ball on the surface we can see oceans mountains rivers lakes and soil all this is on the surface of the earth but what is below the surface of the earth let us see have you observed a boiled egg it has many cover first is the hard outer cover then the second is the white part and the third one is the yellow part at the center similar to an egg earth has three layers under the surface each layer is of different thickness first layer is crust the crust of the earth is same like the hard outer cover of an egg maybe you all have seen yes the hard outer cover of an egg the crust is same like that second is mantle the mantle of the earth is like the white part of the egg so as you can see in the picture the white part of the egg so mantle is same like that the third part is core the core of the earth is like the yellow part of the egg so as in egg the third layer is the yellow part so in the layers of the earth the third layer is core and it is like yellow part of the egg now we have learned there are how many layers of the earth the first one is the crust the second is the mantle and the third is core now core has two parts first one is the outer core and the second is inner core properties of layers of earth we know that like a boiled egg earth also has many layers below the surface let us look at these first layer is crust it has mountains plains and oceans and supports most life it is hard and thin so on crust what are there mountains plains and oceans are there that supports life and it is hard and thin the second layer is mantle most of the volume of the earth is in the mantle near the crust it is very hard but as we go deeper it is hot liquid called magma so just below the crust what is there mantle is there it is very hard but as we go deeper it is hot liquid and what is it is called it is called magma after mantle comes the core and core has two parts outer core and the inner core so in outer core it is near the mantle just after mantle what is there outer core and it is liquid and it is very hot after outer core then comes the inner core inner core it is hot solid ball inside the outer core after outer core then comes the inner core and it is hot solid ball it is the hottest layer it is the deeper most deeper so it is very hot it is the hottest layer 
so these are the different layers of the earth the first is the crust then mantle then core and core has two parts outer core and the inner core so we have learned layers of the earth and their properties let's quickly check how much you have understand first question is name the outermost and thinnest layer of earth the layer where we stay i hope you know the answer and the answer is crust crust is the outermost and thinnest layer of the earth the layer where we stay next question is name the largest layer of the earth it is very hard near the crust and hot liquid as we go deeper the answer is mantle mantle is the largest layer of the earth and it is very hard as we go deeper it is hot liquid so now we will learn about uses of rocks what is a rock the solid layers of earth are made up of naturally occurring solids called rocks so rocks are made naturally humans can't make rocks and it takes millions of year to form rocks now where do you think rocks are used for let's see uses of rocks in prehistoric times let us go 3.3 million years back and look at the uses of rocks in the prehistoric or the stone age in the stone age how people were using how early man were using rocks so hammer stone were used as hammer to beat on the surface all you know hammer hathoda so hammer stones were used as a hammer to beat on the surface when they have to beat on any surface sharp stones were carved out of big stones and used to hunt or kill so early humans were carving big stones and they gave them sharp shape just to use them as for hunting or for killing the animals flint stones were used to light fire and cook food earlier there were no match stick no lpg gases nothing were there so what early humans were doing they were using flint stones they used to rub those stones to light fire and to cook their food human beings used stones to create buildings and structures have you seen any structure built using rocks have you ever seen any of the structure which is built by rock let's see temples show temple in mahabalipuram is 1400 years old and was built with rocks as you can see in the picture the temple is whole built by rocks pyramids in egypt which are considered as one of the seven wonders of the world were built with rocks so all the pyramids in egypt they are considered as the seven wonders of the world they are also pyramids are also built with rocks let us look at some of the modern days use of rocks how we are using rocks in the modern days also so coal which is a rock coal is also a rock and is burnt in the power plants to produce electricity so now also in the modern days also we are using rocks and how it is helpful it helps it is burnt in the power plant and it produces electricity same way limestone which is another rock limestone is also a rock and it is used to make cement and we use cement as we all know we use cement in building 
walls when we are building our house that time we use cement now let us learn the formation of igneous rock the earth core contains molten metal due to hot temperature the metal melts forming magma so under the surface of the earth what is there molten metal is there and when like downside it is too hot so due to hot temperature that metal melts and what it forms it forms magma the magma results in pressure on the earth surface causing it to break so downside when the magma is made when the metal melts and it form magma so it brings pressure it creates pressure on the earth surface and it cause it to break when the surface breaks some of the magma comes out which is called lava when the magma comes out of the surface it is called lava the lava cools down outside the earth to form extrusive rocks so the lava which comes out it cools down and when it cools down it forms extrusive rocks and the magma cools down under the surface of the earth that forms intrusive rocks so the lava the magma which comes out that is called lava and when the lava cools outside the surface of the earth it forms extrusive rocks when magma cools down under the surface of the earth they form intrusive rocks let's check how much you have learned so the question is how are igneous rocks formed from the answer is igneous rocks are formed from the magma under the surface of the earth when it comes out it form the extru extrusive igneous rocks and when magma cools under the surface of the earth it forms intrusive igneous rocks i hope you all have understood what we have learned in today's class that's all for today thank you students for attending the class happy learning